Hello Algebra 1 students and welcome back to your Topic 2 lessons on Linear Equations. Uh, today's Lesson 2.5 and this is actually your last lesson in Topic 2. Uh, we're going to focus on graphing linear equations in any form. So as a friendly reminder, over the last couple days we've discussed how to graph linear equations that are in slope-intercept form. Right, start at the y-intercept, use the slope, and hk form. Start at the point h comma k, use the slope. However, there are really an infinite number of ways that you can write a linear equation, and we need to be able to graph from all of them. Now you might be thinking, well wait, how do we learn an infinite number of different equations? Well the answer is, you don't. If your equations are not in slope-intercept or hk form, there's going to be two options for how to graph, and we're going to go over that today. So let's start with a nice little opener. These three equations on the opener are all in slope-intercept or hk form. Your job is to graph them without doing much, if any, math, um, and then we will discuss. Ready, set, go. All right, let's go ahead and look at these. Now, looking at these three, you might have said, oof, A looks kind of tricky, but B, B isn't too bad, and you'd be right. Um, on problem B, we have our y-intercept, which is 0, 3, so we can graph that. We don't know the x-intercept. I don't think any of our equations have given us an x-intercept yet. Uh, but we do know the slope, and I think our slope tells us to move. I'll move the negative to the top. You can put it on the top or the bottom. But it says, and I should zoom in, sorry, to go down one and to the right one. So let's follow those directions. Down one to the right one gives us our next point. We can follow the rest of this. You could even go the other way, up one to the left one. And then we go through and we play connect the dots to make a nice linear continuous function. All right. Once we've done that, you might notice that if you follow this function down, we actually do get to the x-intercept here. It looks like the x-intercept is 3, 0. Remember last class we discussed that a y-intercept, the x is always 0, and x-intercept, the y is always 0. All right, so we tackled that one. That wasn't terrible. Um, let's go ahead and move back to A, actually. I think that's probably a worthwhile doing. Um, a, I don't see any parentheses. And no parentheses is probably some sort of giveaway. Whew, sorry. Ah, wide awake today. Uh, for an HK form, or there are no parentheses, so it is probably not an HK form equation. Instead, I bet this is slope-intercept in clever disguise. To use slope-intercept form, we need to find the number multiplying by x first. And 3 is certainly not multiplying by x. x is subtracting from 3, but they're not attached by multiplication. I think, though, you could put in that invisible 1 that's in front, and then we can see that there's actually a negative 1 multiplying by 3. But then what's adding? Well, to see that, I'm actually going to rewrite this equation quickly. We have that negative 1x that I can put first, and then this 3 is a positive 3. So I'm going to put the plus 3 at the end. Once you have those two, it shouldn't be too terrible to graph. You can see our y-intercept is 0, 3, right? And then our slope is negative 1, but if I wanted to, we should probably treat that slope as a fraction so we can see the rise over run here. So I wrote my value over 1, and it's down 1 over 1. There we go. In fact, I think this actually is very similar, if not the same, as the equation before. This looks just like part B. So here's my graph, and we're good. Okay, following this graph down, I think we can see that it's the same x-intercept, 3, 0. See, that was wild. These two equations ended up being exactly the same, even though they looked different at the beginning. Let's go ahead and check out this last one. HK form. Well, with HK form, we know that there's a slope, so that's this guy out front, and we can write that over 1. And then, there isn't actually a y-intercept or an x-intercept in HK form, they just give us a point. What point? Well, we take the h and the k, and that's going to give us a point. We know it will be comma 1, that's our k value, but don't forget that the h value always is the opposite of what it looks in the equation. If it looks like a negative 2, then h is actually positive 2. So that tells us to go to the point 2 comma 1, and then use our slope. Our slope says down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, or we could reverse it, up 1 left 1, up 1 left 1. And by doing that, we might start to realize that first, 
the y-intercept is 0 comma 3 and the x-intercept is 3 comma 0 which should sound a little bit familiar from the others and second if you do um, create a nice continuous function here uh, then you will find that it is the same graph again all three of these equations are actually the same equation just in different forms and that's going to be really our intro into the day the fact that just because the two equations don't look alike they still can make the same graph so go ahead and jot down your observations your conclusions you might want to write down any um, uh, any I don't know epiphanies any light bulbs that went off about how to graph and then we can move on all right just a friendly reminder that slope intercept form and HK form are just different ways to write an equation of a line. They both make a line. Sometimes they can be the same equation like in the opener, just in disguise. And so what we're actually going to do is quickly fill in some things we already know and then hopefully fill in something we don't. So we're just going to do both of these at the same time. Each of these equations will give you a point and a slope. And let's make sure we know what those are. So, in slope-intercept form, the given point is the y-intercept, right? It is 0, comma, b. That is the y-intercept. However, in hk form, the given point is positive h, right? It looks like the opposite, comma, k. And the significance of the point, well, it isn't anything like the y-intercept. It's just a point on the line. Now it could be the y-intercept, could be the x-intercept, but it's definitely a point somewhere on the line. All right, well, where do we find the slope? The slope is, of course, the m. It's multiplying up here, right, m. And it's multiplying by x. And to find more points, once you have the y-intercept, you use m, which is the slope. Same thing over here. The location of the slope is m. Okay. And it is again multiplying by x. To find more points, we use m. So these two equations are very, very similar. I think hk form is the one that's more powerful because it lets us translate or move our line both horizontally, that's the h, and vertically, that's the k. But either way, they really generally do the same thing. Now, we are going to focus first today on converting equations into different forms. What that means then is we should be able to take slope intercept form and write it as hk form. And same thing, if you have hk form, we should be able to write it as slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and start with slope intercept form. Okay, slope intercept form, and I'll erase this just so it's a little bit more clear, doesn't look like hk form because it's missing parentheses. That's the biggest difference, right? Obviously, h and k, we'll get there in a second, but it's missing parentheses. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add parentheses. And what that means is I want to add parentheses without changing the problem. So I can't, and I'm going to rewrite this. I know it's kind of small there, but I think we can make it work. Um, I can't, so let's see, I can put parentheses really wherever I want as long as it doesn't change the problem. For example, I could put parentheses here. But that's not really helpful. Just by putting parentheses there, it doesn't change it to hk form. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and find a place where I can put parentheses to make it match the form up above. And in particular, you might notice that x is inside the parentheses in hk form. So you might be tempted to say, well, can I put parentheses like this? And the answer is sadly no. Do you see why? If you put parentheses here, that means that m would be distributing or multiplying times both x and b. And in slope-intercept form, is m multiplying by x and b? Well, no, it's only multiplying by x. So if I put parentheses here, that means m is multiplying by too many things. I've changed the problem. I need to put parentheses where the problem doesn't change. And so what I'm actually going to do is just put parentheses around the x. You might say, well, how does that help? Well, if you just put parentheses around the x, m, I'm going to make a little larger space for those parentheses here. Notice 
that now there's nothing inside the parentheses, but we're pretty close to HK form. M parentheses X, same as up here. There's a plus something on the outside. We just need the H value on the inside. And again, the question becomes, what can I put on the inside that won't change our problem? And I think that answer is either plus or minus. You can put either one, zero. So slope intercept form is the same as HK form. It contains the point zero comma B. So if you are ever asked to change something to HK form, your first step is you group the X in parentheses, making sure you haven't changed the problem, and then just give that X a little bit more space inside the parentheses and give it a plus or a minus zero. I'll put a plus since I put minus before. This is the HK form of this slope intercept form line. If you were to graph either one, they make the same equation. All right, let's look at the second one. How to convert to slope intercept form? Well, this one's a little trickier because you'll notice down here that, well, actually, it's not even trickier. It might even be easier for you. You'll notice down here that I can't just remove the parentheses. I'm going to erase this, so don't write it yet. If I were to remove the parentheses, I would get this. And then we would have taken away from this 2 because the 2, as it stands, has to distribute to the x and the 4. It's multiplying times both of those. If I take away the parentheses, all of a sudden this 4 is like, hey, I was multiplying by 2. Where did everything else go? So what we're actually going to do is just distribute. Right? Distributing drops parentheses. And we want to drop parentheses because slope-intercept form doesn't have parentheses. So that seems like a good step. And once we're there, I think we can probably combine like terms. 8 minus 5, isn't that 3? And look, isn't this slope-intercept form now? Yeah, that's it. So we have these two equations, and they are the same equation, just presented in different ways. They make the same line. So how do we convert to slope-intercept form? Your first step is you have to distribute, and your second step is you have to combine like terms. And that's it. So not too hard to convert back and forth between these two. Now, why would you want to convert back and forth? Well, first, you might forget how to graph one of these. You're like, ooh, HK form, that scares me. Well, you can always distribute and turn it into slope-intercept form if you're more comfortable with that. Same thing the other way. You're like, ooh, slope-intercept form, don't remember that. I want HK form. The second reason we might want to convert, though, is, and we're going to move on to this next page, is sometimes we're going to get equations that aren't in slope-intercept form or HK form. And so we will need to be able to convert to slope-intercept or HK to graph. Now, in a textbook, this lesson would technically be about equations in standard form. Standard form is when the x's and the y's are on the same side of the equation. And you have this number multiplying by x that we call a, the number multiplying by y that we call b, and it's equal to some other number on the other side. It also says a, b, and c are integers, so there's no fractions or decimals here. However, we've found that especially in Algebra 1, just learning about standard form isn't too useful. Right? Standard form isn't going to do very much for us. And here's why. If you have an equation where y is not by itself, and I have this in bold down here, where y is not isolated, we do not know the slope. So even though this number is multiplying by x here, it is not the slope. And so we found that standard form is pretty not useful for us. There are a couple exceptions that we'll discuss next unit. And so what we do today instead is not only do we look at equations that are in standard form, right? And for example, this equation down here is in standard form because they're invisible ones in front of the x's and the y's, and it's, they're on the same side and equal to a c value. We also are going to cover just other types of linear equations, just equations where the x's and y's might be moved all over the place, right? Look at this guy. This has a number attached to y, but the x isn't over here. That's not standard form. It's not hk form. Okay, if I, and as we go further, we'll see some other weird ones. So what we're going to use today to do is to graph linear equations in any form. doesn't matter what form it is. We want to be able to graph it. And there are two ways to do that. The first method is going to be what we learned last class. And that's going to be by finding intercepts. 
Now as a reminder, last class we learned that we can find x-intercepts by replacing y. We don't want there to be y anymore. Replacing y with 0 and then solving for x. Then to find the y-intercept, you replace x with 0 and then solve for y. Once you have those intercepts, we're just going to graph and connect the dots. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. First problem, 1y plus 1x, we don't need the 1's here, you can put them if you'd like. The work for the x-intercept. Well for the x-intercept, notice that the y is 0. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to replace y with 0. So 0 plus x equals 3. Then we need to isolate x. However, 0 plus x, that's just x. And so actually I think I'm done here, I think x is 3. Not bad. If I wanted, and actually let's go ahead and graph that point too, 3 comma 0, that's right here, cool. Alright, let's do the work for the y-intercept. Well, jumping back to my equation, the y-intercept, I want there to be a y in the problem, I don't want there to be an x. So we're going to replace the x with 0 this time, and we'll keep the y. Then, we need to solve for y. But the nice part again is that y plus 0 is just y, and so we find that y is 3, 0 comma 3. And then, once we have two points, I think that's probably enough to create a graph. Two points, you can use your straight edge or your ruler to go through and connect those points, and we should be done. Actually, you might notice that this is the same equation as the opener as well, and we have those same two intercepts. You also might notice that once you have those two points, finding the slope isn't too bad. You could calculate the slope by going down 3 and over 3, those are two nice points. Or you might even recognize that you can go down 1 over 1. But either way, if you wrote your slope as down 1 over 1 or down 3 over 3, you'll notice that that slope is not in the problem. There isn't a single negative number anywhere in the problem. The number in front of x is positive 1, but our slope is actually negative 1. So if y is not by itself, you cannot find the slope. Let's try another. This one looks really similar, except instead of y plus x, it's y minus x. Um, I am going to go ahead and put the 1's in front of both of these now. It's never a bad idea, in fact it's probably a good idea. If your variables don't have a coefficient in front of them multiplying, you should probably put 1 in. So let's do the work for the x-intercept. We know for the x-intercept, the y is 0. We want there to be an x. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the y with 0, like so. 1 times 0 is 0. We don't really need to write the 0 anymore. So really, this is going to go away. And that leaves us with the negative 1x equals 3. And this is going to bring us to the most common mistake I see students make. They forget the negative that's here. Don't forget that the sign that's to the left of the variable has to travel with the variable. Don't forget your negative. Once you're here, it's not bad. We divide both sides by negative 1, and we find that x equals negative 3. All right, negative 3, 0, that's right there. Work for the y-intercept. Well, we know for the y-intercept, right, there should be a point down here. Uh, it seems to have vanished off my page. So the y-intercept, we know that the x is 0, because I'm just curious about the y. So we have 1y minus 1 times 0, Okay. The 1y isn't going anywhere. Whoops, I was supposed to change colors. There we go. Um, 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 0 is still 0, so that negative with the 1 is gone, and this just equals 3. Well, if we just have 1y, do we need to write the 1 in front? I don't think so. And so we found that y is positive 3. Once we're here, let's connect those points, and we should be good. There we go. Notice that you could count the slope, it's up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. It doesn't ask you to find the slope, but I always think it's good practice. And so we find the slope is positive 1, even though in the equation it looks like negative 1. Alright, last two. X-intercept, Y-intercept. Well, let's see, the X-intercept, we know that the Y has to be 0, there's going to be an X. So it's going to be 2X minus 4, let's zoom in here, 4 times 0 equals 8. Well, nothing's happening to the 2x, but negative 4 times 0 is 0, and we don't need to write a plus or a minus 0, so this just gives us 8. Finishing our solution, we divide by 2, 
and I think we find that x equals 4. 4 comma 0. Great. Second part, the y-intercept. We know for a y-intercept, the x is always 0. We're interested in the y. So this becomes 2 times 0 minus 4y equals 8. 2 times 0 is just 0, which we don't need to write. We do still need to write the negative attached to the 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. And we find that y is negative 2. My y-intercept is 0, negative 2, and we're set. You could count the slope ahead of time if you wanted, up 2. So my slope is going to be up 2, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we can connect those. We can even go, if you want more points, down 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there we go. You might even notice that that slope reduces to up 1 over 2, doesn't it? So either of those, 2 over 4 or 1 half, and I do not see a 1 half in this equation anywhere. So be very careful. We don't know the slope. Last problem. All right, a little bit more confusing. Now we have things on both sides, but it sh still should work, no problem. So for an x-intercept, we know the y is always 0. So this becomes 0 minus 2 equals 3 times x plus 1. Well, we're only going to know the value of x if x is by itself, so we're going to work both sides here. Combine like terms on the left side. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. On the right side, it looks like we have to distribute. 3x plus 3. Is x alone? Well, no, I don't think it is. I think there's a 3 multiplying and a 3 adding. So we should probably go through and subtract 3 from each side. This gives us negative 5 equals 3x. And then, to finish this off, divide off the 3. Okay. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I can write this down below. So, this gives us then that x equals this fraction. 3 doesn't go in nicely, negative 5 thirds. Now I found that students prefer not to graph a fraction. Uh, they prefer decimals here, which is totally fine. So go ahead and try dividing 3 into 5 on your calculator. Right? 5 divided by 3, don't forget the negative. I think you're going to get negative 1.666. Remember in math, we always go three digits past the decimal. So our point is negative 1.666. How do we graph that? Well, we go to our x-axis. Here's negative 1. Here's negative 2. Negative 1.666 is in between those. Here's negative 1.5. That's right in between. We just need to go a little bit further. And the nice part about graphing is it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's somewhere in between negative 1, negative 2, a little bit closer to negative 2, and that's that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the work for the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, I'm jumping back to my equation, we want the x to be 0. Okay. So I'm creating the point where x, where x <laughs> is 0. There's nothing much to do on the left side for now. Those aren't like terms. The right side, though, we can just follow PEMDAS. 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay. 3 times 1 is 3. Well, are we done? No, I don't think y is isolated this time. I think we probably have to add 2 to each side. And so this will give us that y is equal to 5. And so we can go through and graph 0, comma 5. Now you might say, whoa, how do we calculate the slope here? And that's a little bit trickier. In fact, I don't think it's something you need to worry too much about. You could go down 5 over 1.666, down 5 over 1.666, and it would bring us probably right about here-ish. And it doesn't have to be perfect. However, don't stress yourself about the slope right here. We're going to go through and figure out at least that we can see the line that looks like this. All right, so option one, if you have an equation in a form you don't know how to graph, so not slope intercept or HK, you just can find both intercepts and graph. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, there is a second option that you also need to be comfortable with. Some students say, well, why? Graphing intercepts is so easy, it's my favorite. Well, I'm not going to show you a second method that's like crazy hard or anything. In fact, I think both of these methods have their advantages and disadvantages. Graphing intercepts isn't too bad, but it actually tends to be a little more work. It's not hard work, but there's a little bit of work you have to do for each one. 
I think this second method, and our second method, by the way, is going to be converting our equation to one of our common forms, either slope, intercept, or hk. I think this is less work and actually shows us a little bit more of a picture or a better idea of what the graph is going to look like ahead of time. However, I also find that students make more mistakes on this even though it's less work. So what do we need to do? Well, we're going to take each one of these equations and we're either going to convert it to slope-intercept form, in fact, we're most commonly going to convert to slope-intercept, or sometimes, if we're lucky, hk form. One advantage of doing it this way is the equation, once we convert it, because slope-intercept form and hk always have a slope and a point, are going to tell us the slope and a point on the graph. Remember, when we did intercepts, we had to count the slope. This one's actually going to tell us the slope. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we need to do. Our end goal is we want an equation that's in the form of y equals m times x plus b. Right now, we don't have that because y and x are on the same side of the equal sign. y is currently positive, though, which is pretty nice, so I like that. These are matching up. The thing I don't like is that there is a negative x attached to the y, or x is subtracting from y. So the question we need to ask is, how do we make x move to the other side? Well, we just undo subtraction. To undo subtracting x, we add x to each side. Now notice when I added x, I didn't put it under the 3. They're not like terms. They cannot sit next to each other. So this just gives us 3 plus x. However, to really make this look like slope-intercept form, we like to put the x first. And we also need a number multiplying times x. Oh, but we saw this on the opener. We can put in an invisible 1. And then let's swap the order. y equals 1x plus 3. Once we're here, I think we have slope-intercept form. y equals, well, 1 is 1 over 1x one plus 3. We can see the slope that tells us to go up 1 to the right 1. And we can see our y-intercept, which is 0, comma, 3. Let's graph that. 0, comma, 3 is right here. And my slope says to go up 1 to the right 1. And I think from here, we can just follow that pattern all the way down, and we have our graph. Okay. Nothing terrible. Now notice that this is actually the same. Part A over here is the same as part B on the previous page. Y minus X equals 3. We got the same graph. We just did it in two different ways. For this one, the intercept, you had to replace Y with 0 and find X. Replace X with 0 and find Y. Decent amount of work. Plot the intercepts and you're good. For this one, we really only had one step. Add X and then rearrange. Okay, let's try another. Y plus X equals 3. Well, we know that eventually we're aiming for that y equals m times x plus b. We want y alone. y is not alone. But that's easy enough to fix. Subtract x this time. x, negative x, and 3 are still not like terms. Let's put those next to each other. And then rearrange. Now again, I want to see the number multiplying by x here, so I can put in the 1. That gives us y equals negative 1x and a positive 3. And I think that's our slope-intercept form. Don't forget to write your slope as a fraction. So we can see that our slope tells us to go down 1 to the right 1. And then our y-intercept, 0, 3. 0, 3, down 1 to the right 1. Okay, we have each of those pieces. Go through, connect, and we're set. All right. Now, this next one, why don't you guys go ahead and try C1, um, and then I'm going to help you make sure you did C1 correct, and then show you a different way to do C2. Good luck. All right, you're back. Let's take a look at that C1 problem. Well, with C1, we again are going for that y equals mx plus b form. And the way I find that most students do this is they go through and they say, well, y is not alone. And my question is, why is y not alone? They say, well, x is subtracting to y. And that's actually not quite true. In fact, you can see that x isn't subtracting by y if you rearrange this equation to start. I'm going to put in that invisible 1 that's in front of y. If you want, you can put the 1 in front of x. But if you rearrange it, this tells you that this will be negative 1y plus 1x equals 3. Is x subtracting to y? And no, it's not. X is actually adding to Y, and it's kind of hard to see that. I always like to write the Y first. 
So then there's two steps here. Step one is we'll need to subtract the one x. Always undo addition and subtraction first. Gives us negative one y equals three minus one x. And then our last step, and this is a really important one, is we need to divide both sides by negative one. When you divide both sides, it is always a good habit to group both sides in parentheses. We actually talk about that when we first start solving equations. Now when you divide by negative one on the left side, we divide the negative one to the negative one, it makes one, and that's going to give me y. But when I divide the negative one to the right side, I need to actually distribute this negative one because we always distribute multiplication and division in these linear equations. I need to distribute the negative one to both terms. Sometimes you'll even see this, and I'll probably have to write this twice actually, that's okay. Sometimes you'll even see this written like this. We have three divided by that negative one minus one x divided by that negative one. And so, rewriting this and getting our final answer, I'm going to move the x's first. Negative one divided by negative one is positive one x. Three divided by negative one is negative three. Yeah, definitely tricky, and I find a lot of students make that mistake. They forget to distribute their division. You guys are great about distributing multiplication, but you need to do it with division as well. So as we write this, our slope is 1 over 1, our y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3, up 1 over 1, and we have the rest of the points on our equation. Like so. Now, I did promise you a second way to do this problem, that's why C2 is the same. So as we go through and do this a second way, we just need to think about a different way to go about this. Now in particular, this says x minus y equals 3. I know in slope intercept form, I want my y to be positive. And right now my y is negative. So I'm going to be bold and go rogue here. And I, instead of getting rid of the x, I'm actually going to undo the y. And you can move any term you want. That's what algebra tells us. As long as you know the rules, you can move anything around. So I'm going to cancel out the y on the left. And that gives me x equals 3 plus y. And the reason I did that is because I wanted y to be positive, and now it is. Now, there's still something attached to y, and I don't want that. y does also need to be alone. How do we undo the 3 that's adding to y? Well, we just subtract 3 from each side. x and 3 are not like terms, so they sit right next to each other. And I think we're actually done right now, aren't we? We have y equals, y is on the right side, but that's okay. There's a number in front of x, that's the 1, minus 3. And doesn't that give us a slope of 1 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 3? In fact, that's exactly the same as the problem before. And I think it's a little bit easier this way, so you don't have to divide off that negative. So yeah, it's one of the tricks I like to use, I like to go through. Um, and if y isn't positive, I like to make it positive. I think it makes it easier in the long run. So all right, 2 to go. Here we go. 4x equals negative 2y plus 8. We need to make this into slope-intercept form. Well, two ways to do it. You could make the negative 2y positive by adding it, but I'm going to go kind of the longer way around just because I think it's more traditional. I'll start because we know we're trying to isolate y by subtracting 8 from each side. When I do that, 4x minus 8 equals negative 2y. I put the minus 8 on the right of the x. You could have done negative 8 plus 4x, but we know mx plus b, we put the x's first. Last but not least, we need to divide off the negative 2 on both sides. Okay. Well, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, so that leaves us with y. But here, negative 2, and we have parentheses on the top. To drop the parentheses, we have to distribute our division. And the way that works is we have 4x divided by negative 2 minus 8 divided by negative 2. So finishing this off, 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Don't forget your x. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. And so my slope-intercept form is negative 2 over 1. Forgot my x. x plus 4. So our slope tells us to go down 2 to the right 1. 
and the y-intercept is 0, comma 4. Okay. 0, comma 4, down 2 over 1. And connect to make that nice continuous line. Last problem. This one, there are a couple different ways to do it. Now, if you wanted to convert to slope intercept form, you could distribute the 3, and then you would add the 2 over and combine like terms, and you'd be fine. But I think there's actually a faster way here. I think that this is actually really close to HK form. HK form, as a reminder, is that y m times x minus h plus k. Look how close this is. We have an m x minus h, minus in quotes. We're just missing the k. Couldn't we get y by itself by just adding 2 to each side? Now when we add 2, the 2 isn't going to affect anything in the parentheses, right? We think of parentheses as like a force field. We can't do anything to the inside of that force field until we bring it down. And the only way you bring it down is if you distribute the 3. So I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to keep the 3 up and the x plus 1, and then put the plus 2 at the end. I think we're done. That's hk form, isn't it? This is y equals 3 times x plus 1 plus 2. So sometimes we get lucky, and we might just be able to convert to hk form really quickly. We can see that our slope is 3 over 1, and then there isn't a y-intercept this time. It's actually just going to be a point. And the point here, well, we know it's these two values, the h and the k, except it's not 1 comma 2. It's the opposite of h, negative 1 comma 2. So here is negative 1 comma 2, and then Use your slope. Our slope tells us to go up 1, 2, 3 to the right 1, or down 1, 2, 3 to the left 1, 1, 2, 3 to the left 1. And then we can connect those points. And we're set. So there are a couple practice problems on this last page. However, before you jump into these practice problems, I'd like you to fill out which method you prefer. There are some pros and cons to each method. I find that students make more mistakes converting between forms like this, and they don't like that you're moving x's and y's around. However, with the intercepts, I think there's a little bit more work. On this last page, you can use any method you want. However, you do have to use each method at least one time. So somewhere you have to use intercepts, somewhere you have to convert. Um, really, you shouldn't use my video at all for this. You guys should go through and try it on your own. However, if you are stuck, I will go through these solutions, and I will do them in both ways. Um, you don't have to do them in both ways. You can if you want. Um, so we will go through and get this done. I wish you the best of luck, and hopefully this was useful for you. Ready, set, go. All right, let's get through these. We're going to move through a little bit quicker this time. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is use intercepts. So I'm going to find the x-intercept first, and I'll just label it over here. To find your x-intercept, we know that we still want an x, but we want y to be 0. This just becomes 2x equals 6. And this just means 2 times what is 6? Well, I think 2 times 3 is 6. You can divide 2 to both sides. So this gives me the point x is 3, y is 0. We also need to find the y-intercept. Very similar to the x, except now we don't want an x in the problem. 2 times 0 is 0. And so this becomes negative 3 times what is 6? Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. So that gives me an x of 0, a y of negative 2. And I think we could go ahead and connect. Before I connect those, though, I'm just going to go ahead and convert this to mx plus b, um, slope-intercept form, just to see if I'm right. So 2x minus 3y equals 6. I'm going to take a quick second and subtract 2x from each side. And you could have done this method instead of my intercepts. It gives me negative 3y equals 6 minus 2x. Well, once we're here, negative 3y, I'm going to go ahead and put the x's first, those negative 2x's and the positive 6 at the end. I think that's a little bit easier. And my last step is I need to divide by negative 3. Don't forget that we have to distribute that division. I'm going to do this all in one step. We get the fraction negative 2x divided by negative 3, and I'm going to write the x on the side. And then 
6 divided by negative 3. Can we simplify that? Sure we can. Two negatives here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 3 doesn't go nicely into 2 though, so I'm just going to keep it as 2 thirds. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So what does this tell me? It says that we have a y-intercept of negative 2, which look, we found up above, and we have a slope of up 2 over 3. And if I go up 2 over 3, look, I get to the x-intercept. So that just confirms what I found with those intercepts before. I can also go left 1, 2, 3, down 2, and connect those points. Okay, let's try another. This one's a weird one. I don't see an x in here. No, that's not a typo. I think the first thing I'm going to do, though, is isolate y. Divide both sides by negative 2, and that gives me that y equals negative 3. Now, it's been a while since on video we've discussed this, but you have had problems like this on most of your homework assignments. y equals negative 3 means that we can make a whole bunch of points. I don't know much about the x, but I know that the y has to be negative 3. If there are no restrictions on the x, you can pick anything you want. I don't know, negative 2, 0, and 1. Let's see, negative 2 comma negative 3, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 3. Hopefully you would just remember that the line y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line through the y-axis. You're given essentially the y-intercept, and you connect on through. There is no slope. There's a slope of 0, rather, for this line. All right, next one. Um, this one looks a lot like hk form to me, I think. I think we could probably get y by itself pretty easily here. So I'm going to go ahead and just subtract 2 from each side. That gives us y equals, let's see, this is negative 1, x minus 1 minus 2. I think that's probably enough to graph. I think it tells us that our slope is down 1 over 1, and that there is a point, positive 1 comma negative 2. Positive 1, negative 2. And then our slope says to go down 1 over 1. And follow this up, see those intercepts, and we're set. That's almost certainly the fastest way to do it. However, if you didn't realize that you could do it that way, you can also convert to slope intercept, or sorry, you can also find the intercepts. So if I wanted to find, let's say, the x intercept, that is where we make the y 0. And then you need to go through, distribute, and isolate x. Negative 1x plus 1. x isn't alone, so we need to go through, subtract the 1 from each side. That gives us 1 equals negative 1 times x. And then divide off the negative 1 from each side. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. And so we find that the x-intercept then is going to be an x of negative 1 and a y of 0. Negative 1, 0. Oh, look, it matches up to the point that I already have on my graph. Phew, I've probably done it right so far. Let's check the y-intercept. For my y-intercept, I'm going to build the point where the x is 0, and I'm looking for the y. And this is going to give me y plus 2 equals negative 1 times 0 minus 1. Okay, y plus 2 equals, well, this is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then we need to subtract 2 from each side. Okay. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so I found a y-intercept of negative 1. Notice that the y-intercept over here does match up. And so we have our wonderful continuous line. All right, a couple more. Problem 4. Well, I'm actually noticing problem 4 is going to probably have the least amount of work because this is really close to hk form. Notice I can just take this negative 2 and move it to the end. Negative 3 times x minus 1 minus 2. Ah, hk form. m equals down 3 over 1, and my point is 1 comma negative 2. 1 negative 2, and then my slope down 1, 2, 3 over 1, or up 1, 2, 3 over 1 up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Looking at this, when I connect these, you might notice that the y-intercept is pretty nice, that's 1, but the x-intercept doesn't cross at a nice integer point. And so that means that when I go to find the intercepts right now, my guess is I should, for an x, get either a fraction or a decimal. 
Okay, so let's go through and try these. We'll do the x-intercept first. I have the most work here, so I think it probably makes the most sense. We know the x-intercept always takes the form of the y being 0. So let's do that. This is 0 equals negative 2 minus 3 times x minus 1. 0 equals negative 2. We have to distribute the negative 3 to both of these. Minus 3x plus 3. And then combine like terms. There's a negative 3x with no like terms, but negative 2 plus 3 is like 3 minus 2, that's 1. Two steps to go. I'm going to save some space and subtract 1 from each side. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Those cancel. And then to finish off, I think we have to divide both sides by negative 3. This tells me that x equals negative 1 over negative 3, or a negative divided by a negative, x equals positive 1 third. And I think that makes sense based on my graph. It looks like we cross a little bit less than a half, so at 1 third comma 0. Okay. The y-intercept seems nicer. The y-intercept should be 1, so let's make sure that is what it is. So our y-intercept is going to take the form of an x of 0. I don't know the y. So we have y equals negative 2 minus 3 times 0 minus 1. y equals negative 2 minus 3 times negative 1. Okay. Negative 2, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, and 3 minus 2 is 1. Oof, I've done it well so far. All right, we have two to go. Negative 20 equals negative 5x. Well, this is another one of those weird ones where there's no y. Let's do the same thing as before. I guess it's just missing a variable. We'll at least isolate the variable that's there. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is positive 4. There's just an x, so let's do the same thing as before. I'm going to set up a couple points here. We know that the x is 4, and it didn't tell us about the y, so pick anything you want for y. 4 comma 0, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2. All right, well, I just see a whole bunch of points in a vertical line. We can go through and get that done. To me, this looks like an equation with an undefined slope. We can't define its steepness. It's straight up and down. Last one. 1 half x minus y minus 2. It's weird. All the stuff, all the numbers and the variables are on the same side of the equation. Okay, well, um, I think either way we do this, it's not going to be the easiest. So let's go ahead and maybe convert to slope-intercept form first. Okay, for slope-intercept form, oh, actually, I actually thinking about this, slope-intercept form is going to be really easy. Um, so to do that, I know with slope-intercept form, I want y to be positive. Currently, it's negative. Let's just add y to each side. That, I think, gives us 1 half x minus 2 equals y. Ha! Look, we're in slope-intercept form now. Man, I overthought that. So, it looks to me like my y-intercept is negative 2, and then my slope tells me to go up 1 to the right 2. Much easier than I expected. Or, we could find the intercepts. So, intercept-wise, if I wanted to find the x-intercept, we know that takes the form of something, comma, 0. So, we're going to go through. We end up with 1 half x minus 0 minus 2 equals 0. Well, negative 0 minus 2 is just minus 2. We do need to add 2 to both sides, and I'm going to cheat and give myself a little bit more space here. So let's add 2 to each side, just doing my space-saving horizontal method. These cancel, gives us 1 half x equals 2. And then how do we undo a fraction? Oh, right, we multiply by 2 over 1. Cancel, 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 and it ends up with, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4. Our x-intercept should be 4 times 0, or 4 comma 0, which it is. Awesome. All right, y-intercept. I may run out of room on this, but that's okay. So our y-intercept, we know, always takes the form of 0 comma something. To do that, it's going to be 1 half times 0 minus y minus 2 equals 0. I have to use the bottom of the page here, but there's a little bit of room, so that should be okay. Anything times 0 is 0. We know we don't need to write that. So that leaves me with negative y minus 2 equals 0. 
To get y alone, you could add 2 to both sides and divide by the negative, but I think the sneaky way to do this is actually to add y to each side. By doing that, we make y a positive, and because there's nothing in front of y, y is already isolated, and so we end up with a y of negative 2. Notice that also matches my graph, and we can go through and connect. So what did we cover today? Well, we discussed how equations can look different but make the same line, like over here. We also had a quick discussion of how to convert between slope-intercept and hk. But the main meat of the lesson was how to graph equations that aren't in hk or, stand, or mx plus b. And the way to do that is either find the intercepts by re using zeros or convert to a form that you do know how to graph. So thank you for tuning in. The next couple days will be a review and then your test. I hope you do well, and please leave any comments if there's anything that wasn't explained well or you need me to go over again. Have a great day.